Let's take a look at the new AMD Open Material X library that is available inside Houdini 20. So let's, we got just Solaris opened up here. So let's go ahead and jump in and create a SOP create. And in here, we just, let's just drop down the shader ball. We'll use that as our geometry here. And something that was pointed out to me in the first impressions of Houdini 20 is that you can actually start rendering. I've actually got it running here. You can start rendering inside of Karma without having any render settings set up, which is kind of interesting. Um, so you don't have to actually lay those down just to get a, an idea of, of things. So let's drop down a environment light just to give us some lighting here and we don't necessarily need a camera, so we'll just leave it as is. But let's drop down that material linker that we can use to open up the AMD library. And in here, to it's by default gonna be set to this little cog wheel. If you come to open default material catalog, this is what you're going to be brought up with. So this is going to be the uh, Houdini's M, um, library that they've just created of, of materials. And if you want to open up the AMD Material X library, you can come to that cogwheel and go open Material X library. And then you wanna select a place where you'd like to save any of the materials that you, that you open. So once you do that, you are transported over to the material library. And in here, you can just scroll through and select whatever you want. Let's go ahead and just pick one. I'm going to just select this and bring it over to the material list and just drop it in there. If we take a look over here into our scene graph path, we have these starting to show up. So you can either take one and just drag it over to your material and assign it that way or, or to your object and assign it that way. Or you can drop down a material or assign material node and we can just view that and take our material path, just click and drag our material path to that. And we can set this to the primitive. So we want our shader ball inside of there. And now we have our shader ball or our material assigned to our shader ball here. Let's go ahead and disable that white thing. So we have some settings that are available to us. If we actually twirl down this, inside of our scene graph view. We have some things that show up in here. If we want to, we can also come into the material linker. We can right click this and we can click edit material properties. And then this gives us a bunch of material properties. If we actually come back in here and go right click and edit material network, that's going to drop down and edit material and we can click load. That's gonna load up our material into that which is basically just a subnet with a bunch of inputs in here. Um, it's the same thing that you get with this and you can click the little icons here and click set or create. And I can you know drag these up and, and get some different things. And you'll use these somewhat, but I've, I've kind of noticed they don't necessarily um, work the best. I don't know, it's just a, a little bit weird in how they, how they work. Like if you want to affect uh, the roughness, it's, it just doesn't, there's no, like, even if we just come up here and we click this little search icon, we come to this roughness, we can, whoops, we can set or create all of these, and that's just going to leave them through default settings, and we start to, like, crank up these, it's not really going to affect our material that much which is a little weird. You'd think that this would start to go away um, and this, this roughness would start to be affected, but it's really in the, the specular value, at least for this, this um, material. So if we come to our input specular and I lower this, that gets rid of the roughness. I don't know, things are just kind of assigned weird. Um, it's just a little bit weird. But if you want to, if you actually notice if I get rid of this, if I look through here or I, or I come into the search and just look for the UVs or like tiling, there is no tiling in there, which is kind of weird. I don't know why they have that set up like that, but we can come into our 
scene graph over here, we can right click on this and come to edit primitive with new node. Now it's gonna drop down a material properties and edit material properties node again. And then we can come in here and we can do set or create. And then as I drag this up, you can see that we're starting to get more tiling going on. Uh, it's not super noticeable with this material, but if we wanna change that, we can, let's, let's go to one of these other ones. Uh, maybe we'll do this wooden one. And we can come into the assigned material and let's just come down to this wood flooring here. And we've now changed our material. And then if we wanna change, like I said, the UV tiling, we can just come in here and right click, edit primitive with new node and we can set or create and then we can start to adjust this and now you can really see that it's apparent that the tiling is changing so you can play around with that but it's just a little bit weird at least in my opinion the way that these materials are set up um, maybe I, I don't know if you could go to the website and download them and and import them a different way because i think there is a way to import material x materials a different way if i remember correctly um, and they should give you parameters like the, like if we drop down uh, material library, and if we were to do a material X, let's see, material X builder, and we get like different settings in here. So like a texture, or it's an image in material X. So we get like these type of, of nodes, like uh, the image materials and stuff, I think. Because uh, you are able to actually create, or at least in the hoodie 19.5, although there was a bug with it, I don't know if they ever fixed it, you were able to create um, like your own materials and you were able to kind of package them up as material X like assets but you couldn't re-import them. I don't know if they ever ever fixed that. So I'll have to look into that, but uh, that is the basics of how to get yourself set up with this new AMD material library. You can do all sorts of fun stuff with that. Uh, there's a ton of different materials in here. Like see just how many there are. You can go through them all and, and you can search. Maybe I'll, I'll leave a link. I think this is a, I, th I think I could find a link to this open library and you can kind of see a better view of all these materials on like a web page so i'll try to grab that and leave that a link in the description but anyways hopefully this helps you out uh, i've got a bunch more stuff on houdini 20 coming so if you're interested in any of that make sure you guys uh, stay tuned for that keep an eye out for those and uh, i guess we'll see you in the next video have a good night